Let me at least show my eyes, so people don't dislike the video. No no no! For God's sake, we don't have an animation budget for that. Wow, what poverty. So guys, how are you? I hope you are well, I am the Monio, the interdimensional demon who talks the most about Jujutsu Kaisen on YouTube, and you are on my channel. Let's get straight to the point, at the end of chapter 260 of the Jujutsu Kaisen manga, during the fight against Sukuna, a mysterious figure appears who appears to be Satoru Gojo, and this broke the internet in half, bringing back all those theories that Satoru Gojo would return, but in the next chapter, we discovered that it was actually Yuta, who had copied the Kenjaku technique and was using Satoru Gojo's body. This was a big plot twist in the story, and there were people who liked it and others who hated it I believe there were a lot more people who hated it. I have a few things to say about this plot twist, but first I wanted to make it clear that unlike a lot of people, I really liked it. I think it made sense and was quite creative in the story, but let's quickly contextualize some things so I can explain my point better. As you know, the world of Jujutsu is a very cruel world, in which the story is not so benevolent towards good characters. Many people say that the author is sadistic, that he likes to kill good characters, but I think that simply the world created by the author, most of the time, does not reward kindness, so if you are a kind character, you will not be rewarded for it. Moreover, in Jujutsu, the nature of the characters is extremely questionable, since there is no sense of justice guided by kindness that allows sorcerers to spare their enemies for example. And even though the premise of the story is that sorcerers kill cursed spirits, which are essentially evil beings, created from negative feelings that we assume are bad, most of the protagonists have no problem killing other humans, Satoru Gojo himself killed Ghetto, who was his best friend, in other animes this would be something inconceivable, and would be an extremely questionable attitude, but in Jujutsu, this is already something intrinsic to how the world was built, Gojo at that moment did what needed to be done, since Ghetto was a dangerous enemy that needed to be eliminated, so basically being a Jujutsu sorcerer is basically the worst thing anyone can be in their life, since there is no glory if you are good. This cruel reality that the characters need to face is very well portrayed in the arc of Yuji Itadori, who until the Shibuya incident, still remained a kind character with an optimistic view of that world, but after his fight with Mahito, Itadori needed to mature as a character and become much colder and crueler than before, and he starts to see himself as a tool, a small gear that needs to work so that the entire system doesn't stop, and this was an adaptation that showed the transformation of a kind character due to the world he lives in, which demands from characters attitudes that are morally ambiguous and even quite questionable, and history has already proven that when characters try to have more humanized attitudes and stop doing what needs to be done out of empathy or kindness, the consequences of this can be devastating, as shown in the young Gojo arc, in which they try to save Riko, but fail, and this further triggers events that will culminate in the Shibuya arc, and I think this plot Gojo's body twist is just a reflection of all of this. Yuta needed to become the monster he has said many times he would be, so that he could have a chance of beating King of Curses, and while people are finding this something completely strange and different from what has been presented in Jujutsu so far, I think it made perfect sense. Think with me, Yuta is becoming whatever he needs to be to defeat the enemy, he is becoming the monster that he himself said he would become, just like Gojo, and in this he does an extremely questionable from a moral point of view, which ironically is desecrating the lifeless body of his sensei, and at the same time, it brings back Gojo's own arc, which is the idea of him being lonely, because he is always seen as the most strong, and as a weapon for the Jujutsu society, and now in this plot twist, he was literally demoted from a person, to an object to be used, and that I think made perfect sense. I also found the idea very creative, as it makes an interesting parallel with Kenjaku. When Kenjaku was still alive, everyone thought he would eventually steal Gojo or Yuta's body, but what happens is that Yuta uses his own Kenjaku's technique to steal Gojo's body, this was very ironic and unexpected. Furthermore, it is a moment that creates a lot of urgency and tension in the story, due to the fact that you don't know whether or not Yuta will survive, since Rika's copy only lasts 5 minutes. So according to Mei Mei, we have three possible scenarios of what could happen to Yuta. Depending on the type of Kenjaku technique, Yuta could simply die after 5 minutes, he may not die after that time, but die eventually, or he may not die and start living in Gojo's body, but without the possibility of returning to his own body and I believe that in all three of these scenarios we have interesting outcomes for the story, depending on what the author does. And I understand that many people who were Gojo fans must have been dissatisfied, 
because people still had hope that he would return, or perhaps they didn't really believe in the idea that he had died, because they didn't accept that Sukuna was stronger and that he won the fight because he was stronger, and this would be the denial phase of grief, but I think that if the chances of Gojo coming back were low before, now they are practically nil, as it was confirmed that he did in fact die. But for those who think the story was bad, I would say that there are some things that I confess that I'm not liking this part of the manga so much, because I think that this battle against Sukuna has already gone on too long, and we've already had endless flashbacks of characters who comes to battle, and the narrative of the fight is paused to show the flashback of the characters combining what weeks or months before, which in fact is just a simple way for the author to add more and more characters into the fight, and justify it narratively, giving the impression that it was all planned, but in reality it wasn't. And I'm not saying that not having everything planned out in a narrative is necessarily bad, but in this specific case it's only serving to further lengthen a part of the story that was already extremely interrupted with flashbacks and more flashbacks, and I wonder if this will in fact be the end of the story, and I believe so, and that it would be very frustrating for manga readers, if this battle ended and Sukuna was not defeated, since many characters died, and it would be very satisfying if the Itadori was the one to give the fatal blow to Sukuna, since of everyone present, he is probably the only one who is not recognized and respected by Sukuna as someone strong, so I really hope that this whole gigantic fight against Sukuna rewards whoever is following along. The problem is that this doesn't seem like the kind of thing the author likes to do, so I wouldn't be surprised if the ending frustrates some people even more. There's also the fact that in my opinion, Jujitsu works much better if you read it in one go, especially in this part of the fight against Sukuna, in which we have many twists and turns that initially seem like they will change the course of the battle. But in the end, they don't change that much, and all this expectation that is created causes a certain disappointment that builds up as the manga chapters are released. So if you think Jujitsu is bad, I don't completely agree, but I understand your frustration, but I really like Yuta's plot twist. But what about you, what do you think of the Jujitsu manga? Leave it in the comments, and if you like the video, subscribe to follow the next content. Until next time my people, Demonic Hogs. Do you consider yourself the strongest in Jujutsu Kaisen? Yes, I am the strongest. What about Sukuna? Doesn't he beat you? Hell no. Thanks for watching guys. Check out my other videos on the final screen.